Hi everyone. We're going to take a look at uh, some applications of exponentials. So down here, um, I'll just go through how, how you want to solve these uh, very quickly. Um, and then I'll show you some word problem types things that we'll have with, uh, with exponential functions or sorry, exponential expressions. Okay, so here, negative two to the three, this is negative two multiplied by, by itself three times. So we'd write that as negative two times negative two times negative two, okay? The reason for the extra brackets is because I don't want to write it this way, negative two times negative two. This, when I see that, my brain says, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to multiply it or do you want me to subtract it? I don't know. So this is extremely clear, don't do that. Delta math does that by like one pet peeve with delta math. X to the four. X is a number I don't know yet. So this is equal to X times X times X times X. And let's say I want to solve for when X is two. So I'm going to say let X equal two. Well, I could then evaluate two to the four equals 16. Or I could sub it in here and it would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 16. Okay, I can substitute anywhere I want. I could substitute there or here. Easier to substitute there. Okay, this one, this one, let's take a look at that one with a different color, Mr. Jenny, because your writing is big. I can fix that by making the paper bigger. Oh, that's too big. Okay, all right, my eyes got big when the paper got so big. 6 minus 1 squared. There's a few ways to do this, but they all give the same answer. Okay, uh, first is to do the brackets first. Six minus one, five, not seven, five. Okay, and uh, so then you do five squared, which gives you 25. The other way to write this out is to say this is six minus one times six minus one. And then I evaluate each bracket and get five times five anyway, and get 25. You might be thinking, why do it one way or the other way? You wanna know that this is the way. If I have a number I don't know yet, like x minus 1, and I tell you to square that, I have to write that out as x minus 1 times x minus 1, because I can't evaluate this yet. I don't know what x is. So that's what I would need to do to expand that. And there's tricks to do this multiplication that you'll learn in grade 10. Oh, aren't you excited to learn these things? It's so delightful. Okay, 2 times 4 to the 5. Here is a power, it's composed of a base and an exponent. And here is a, a coefficient or an initial value that we're gonna multiply by. So this is equal to, if I expand this out, uh, I'm just gonna remove my circle. Uh, two multiplied by four, 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 okay? So that's four times itself five times and then multiply by two. And it equals, I don't know, it's like 2000 something. I, I, I should memorize my powers of two up to a good number, but you'll also learn that this is two to the 11. This is equal to two times two squared raised to the power five. And, and in the next video, I'll show you that when we are doing this, we multiply the exponents. Why? Well, let's expand this one. Two squared, I just wrote four in a new way, okay? I just want you to know when I use an equal sign, you can be pretty darn sure, unless I've made a mistake, that what's on this side is equal to what's on that side is equal to what's over here. So let's expand this out. Two times two squared times two squared times two squared times two squared times two squared. Okay. These are multiplying. So we add the exponents. And so it's two plus two plus two plus two plus two is 10. And then two times that is 11. Okay. Negative five to the five. This is equal to negative five times five times five times five times five. Okay, here the negative doesn't come along for the exponent ride. So that's an important distinction, but it actually works out to be the same as this one where it does. Uh, but anyway, that's that. So that's how you evaluate these different things. It's just bedmus. But then here is an example of a Petri dish. Okay, every hour the amount of bacteria in a Petri dish is doubling. A Petri dish is the type of dish that you use in science class, and you'll grow bacteria in science class. Cool. So it's an example of an increasing or decreasing relation. Well, it's doubling. Doubling, as far as I know, increases things. So that's increasing. Increasing. 
How many bacteria will be present after five hours? Some of you told me 50. Uh, but we don't double things by multiplying by five. So that can't be right. Uh, some of you told me 100,000. But if I double 10 five times, I don't get 100,000. Okay. One strategy that I can use is a chart. And I'll put in the hours here and the number of bacteria there. Okay. And I'm interested in hour zero. So many people forgot hour zero. Where does it start? Its initial value is 10. Okay. Um, what about after one hour? Well, it doubles. So I, I know how to double 10. It's 20. How about in hour two? Well, I double 20. I don't add another 10. I double 20. So that's 40. That's why 50 is not the right answer. Okay. And then in hour three, I get to 80. In hour four, I get 160. And then in hour five, I ran out of space. Five is equal to double that, which is 320. Okay. Now, many of you might be saying, what if you asked me, Mr. Jennings, how many bacteria will be present after 50 hours? I don't want to write a chart that that's, that's that long. Okay, well, here's how you can create an expression that will do this. You take your initial value, there's 10 bacteria, and it doubles every hour. So basically, I'm multiplying by two. Let's count them. How many times? Once, twice, three times, four times, five times I multiply by two. So let's raise that two to the power five. This, if I expand it out, you'll recognize it. It's 10 times two times two times two times two times two, and that's equal to 320. So that's how I do these. Another example. Let's look at another example. Here's you. This is excluding siblings, okay? Here's you, and here are your ancestors, all right? And if we go back generation and generation and generation, we'll find there's you, and then one generation back, you had a mother and a father. Uh, I guess you're purple, so that means we don't know your gender yet. Uh, and then, uh, and maybe you don't know your gender yet, or, or maybe, maybe you do. Uh, in any case, um, I'm on a tangent. Uh, here we go. Here's you. That's two to the zero. There's two to the zero people here. Uh, anything to the zero is one. Two to the zero equals one. Here is your parents. There's two to the one of them. There were two parents to create you. Each of your parents had two parents. They're called your grandparents. So up here, we have two to the two. That's four people. Up here, your great-grandparents, well, you have eight of them. That's two to the three equals eight. So I could totally ask you how many people in this row, and I don't want to count that many people. I just count the number of rows. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is two to the seven people here. Two to the seven happens to be 128. It does. This would be 64. This is 32. This is 16. There we go. Yeah, it's 128 people up in that row. So that's another example. And I could ask you, uh, how many great, 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 great grandparents do you have? And maybe a diagram like this would help you see what is great, 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 great grandparent. And then you could go up and find that. Okay, so those are our different applications of powers that you might be looking at. Another thing you'll want to know, actually just uh, if you're with me this far, you want to know this for the test. Uh, you'll also want to know what happens if something is getting smaller, decreasing relationships. Let's say I have um, 81, uh, I have $81. And every day, the amount of money I have goes down to a third of what I had before. This is $81 on day one. On day, we'll call it day zero. After one day, day one, my money is $27. Okay. On day two, I have $9. On day three, I have $3. Okay. On day four, I have $1. All right. So what's happening here? When it's decreasing, I can use a negative exponent. Okay, so here I've divided by three once, I've divided by three twice, I've divided by three three times, I've divided by three four times. So here's my initial value, 81 times three to the negative four. This happens down here. So I just put the day number in there as a negative number, and this will work. Okay, that's how I would do that in the simplest way. You could also do it this way, 81 over three to the four. 
This is 81 divided by 3 4 times. It's, you'll notice that that's exactly the same thing I set up there, but it's still equal to this. Okay, so that's uh, decreasing relationships. All right, everybody. Those are our main topics. So I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, I will uh, be available to you by email if you have any questions. Bye for now.